What the QAJAX bar does is it adds a loader at the top of the page and it actually automatically hijacks AJAX requests that you do and will show the loader automatically. So it's really cool. It does a lot of stuff for you straight out of the box without you having to configure anything. Now, there's two ways that we can use the QAJAX bar. One way is using a component, which is what I'm going to show you in this video. However, I want you to know the recommended way is by using a plugin. So first, you might want to have a look at how you would use this using a plugin, but the component just gives us a little bit of extra flexibility uh, just in case that's something that you might need. And so it's definitely worth at least knowing the ins and outs of how this component works. So let's go ahead and get started. Using the Ajax bar component is ridiculously simple. You just say Q-Ajax-Bar. That's it. We can use a self-closing tag here, save it, come back and refresh the page. And it's actually working. However, I'm not doing any requests, so we don't actually see it yet. So in order to test this out, if you go to JSON placeholder.typeycode.com and we scroll down here. Yeah, this is just a sample request that we can make. So if I click on there, it gives us some dummy posts and I'm going to copy that URL, get out of that page, open up our editor and we'll add a little button in here that makes an Ajax request. So let's say Q dash button. And when you click on that button, let's say uh, fake Ajax request. And now we can add a method in here, methods, fake Ajax request, and then quickly just whack that in. This dot, if you remember, we installed Axios at the beginning of this series, which just allows us to make Ajax requests. We're going to make a get request to that endpoint that I just copied before. And then when that's done, how about we say, let's take the response and then we'll set a data property to that response. So let's go in here and say data return and we'll have a result in there, which is equal to null. And then we can say here, this dot result is equal to response dot data. Okay, so make an Ajax request to here and then get the response and set result. So this variable here to the data within that response. And now what we can do is we can add a little pre-tag up here. This is a really good way to show data, by the way, using pre-tags. It's a really cool tip I learned from a video a while back. And we can just whack the results straight in there. So let's come back, refresh the page. Now let's add a label to that button. Label is equal to fake request. There we go, refresh the page. And I've spelled that wrong. <laughs> come back. And there we go, we've got our fake request button. And if we click on it, there we go. We can see that it made the request and the Ajax bar showed at the top. And then we get the response body showing there. And you can scroll down and click the button again. In fact, let's put the button above. It would make a lot more sense, wouldn't it? And there we go. If we click this button, we get that little Ajax bar showing at the top every time, which is really cool. So that's how you use the Q Ajax bar component. It's really basic. And now I'm going to show you how you can configure the Ajax bar component. There's a lot of cool stuff that we can add in to make it look and feel how we'd like it to. We can change the color. Let's make it purple. Save it. And now fake request is going to give us a purple Ajax bar. Now that's really difficult for me to see. So I think that we should make it a little bit bigger. Let's set the size equal to 14 pixels. Save it, make the request again, and it's a little bit bigger and easier to see now. We can also change the position. Maybe you want it at the bottom for some reason, so just whack it onto the bottom. And there we go, we've got the Ajax bar showing on the bottom. Now you might even want it on the right or left side. I've never seen this before, and I only just discovered this in the docs, and it's pretty cool. So you can actually say, hey, show me that bar on the right side. How cool is that? And now if we put it back onto the top, we can even reverse it. So if we say reverse there, it's going to start from the right and go to the left. That's pretty cool. We can also skip the hijack of Ajax requests. So currently when I click on this, behind the scenes is automatically picking up our Ajax request. We can even do this, skip dash hijack, save it, come back, refresh the page. And if I click on the button now, you'll notice that it's not showing up anymore. 
And this means that we can take total control over the Ajax bar and use it however we wish. I'll show you what I mean. Let's turn this into a reference. And the reference, we'll just call it bar, keep it super simple. And I'm gonna comment this out for now. And when we click on that button, we're going to start the bar ourselves by saying, uh, what about we set this to a variable const bar is equal to this dot refs dot bar. So what we're doing is we're taking this component here and we're setting it to the bar constant. So let's just come down here and we'll say bar dot start like so. What have I done wrong here? Oh, of course. Let's bring this back in. I commented out too much. So we just want to comment out the request and we want to whack this within that method. There we go. How silly of me. So now when we hit the fake Ajax request method, it's going to set bar to this component here, the bar component, and then it's going to start the bar. So if we click on that, there we go. The bar has started. However, it's never going to reach an end because we never told it to stop. So let's come down here and we'll just say set timeout. Oh, cool, I got a snippet for that. So in 3000 seconds, we're going to say, well, sorry, three, in three seconds, we're going to say bar.stop, save that, click on the button, one, two, three, and it finishes after three seconds. So now we have total control over the bar component. Now, once again, if you're going to use this component, first explore using it as a plugin. I just wanted to keep this video specific to using bar as a component, but have a look at both ways and choose whatever makes most sense for you. See you in the next video.